Hey there. Today I'm going to be showing you what is the roles and the responsibilities of a content editor. This is going to be a really powerful and helpful role. If you're interested in potentially looking at becoming a content editor, here's what you can you have to expect. Basically, the content editor will be able to at this point be familiar with Google Slides, or at least be willing to learn how to use it. It's a simple program to learn. But the idea behind this is that you'll be able to help us to be able to create slides to be used for local presentations, uh, YouTube videos, online church services, webinars, and social media images. Basically, all these, things, all these slides that you create are going to be used for one or some of these different uh, categories. And it's not just going to be used, it's going to be used by a team of presenters. So maybe you're one of those people that you love to study or you're enjoying what you're learning and you want an outlet to be able to express, to share with others what God has shared with you, but maybe you're camera shy. Maybe you don't want to get in front of a crowd or you don't want to, or maybe you don't have the opportunity to really just do something like that, you can still take your notes or take your skills and talents and use them um, to help someone who is presenting or who is able to get before the great congregations and with your help, your co-laboring together, be able to do something that we otherwise couldn't do apart. This is basically what the content editor is able to do. So how they help is essentially there's different ways, but I'm going to give you some examples. Here is a, a series that a graphic designer was able to do. If you're not graphically inclined, that's okay. You don't have to be. But if you are graphically inclined, um, that can help too. So here's an example of a how to study the Bible section that was done. Here in the uh, presenter notes of the Google slide, we see... There's um, the verse, he wakened me morning by morning, um, which is actually, let me see here. He wakened it to me morning by morning. I actually don't see it. No. Oh, there it is. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned that I, should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh me morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as a learn. So this graphic designer was able to take a verse like this and then turn it into a really beautiful slide. But it all started with this section here. The subject is on have daily devotions in the morning, but there's just little notes. The mercies are new every morning. Manna falls from heaven every morning. Acts 17, 11, Matthew 4, 4 abiding in Christ, an object lesson of withering and being cut off. So the law of beholding, seek ye first, uh, and then Matthew 6.33. So the content editor is able to decide actually what verses are being put in there, or the content editor is able to take the verses that are already there from another Google document or from another publication, website, link, or article, and using the content from that article be able to add each verse to a slide such as this. If you're graphically inclined, you're able to, to choose the background using one of the templates of these slides. You can choose a background photo by inserting and um, going over to image and you can search the web and you can find, like here you have a pile of books I don't know what the graphic designer found, but you're able to see these things. And you want to look for books that are that are not copyrighted. So once you find one, you're able to click that, and then you're able to let me move ahead. You're able to hit insert, and then it inserts it into the publication. It's really nice, super easy. You want to make sure that it's not copyrighted. You can, you're able to um, send this to the back, but we're actually just going to delete this. So essentially, that's what that's doing. If 
Um, so that's really helpful. And it, it's basically taking notes from a document from the presenter notes or something and being able to make slides out of it. And that's, and if you're not graphically inclined, that's totally okay. You can just do this by, um, let's say you look up this verse on a electronic Bible. Then what you would do is click up here, you go to section header and you just create a slide like this. And if you hit control shift V, it is able to add it. And if you put the verse there, then the graphic designer is able to come behind you and turn this verse into that. It's very beautiful what these, these very talented graphic designers are able to do. This is what I did. I, I put the verses on here and then uh, Rebecca from Trinidad and Tobago was able to, to add these, the background and make it look like presentable and really nice. So there was a section here where there was an example of abiding in, in Christ. There's an object lesson of withering and cutting off of this branch. So if you see a note like that, then what you could do is you can create a slide of look at these beautiful berries. In John chapter 10, it describes like abiding in Christ and how I am the vine, you are the branches, and you cannot um, exist unless you abide in me. But what happens when the branches are cut off, it begins to wither and die. So then you can find another photo of showing withering and dying. So you want to be able to have relevant photos that fit the object lesson that is being used. And as many object lessons as can be brought out would be very tremendously helpful to really get that, that vision in the hearer's minds to see what Christ is saying. We can't take them out to the field of, of the vineyards, but the next best thing is seeing these, these photos of these illustrations that Christ used in the Bible. So that as a content editor, you have the freedom and you have the, the authority to be able to choose some of those. And you don't necessarily have to worry about um, how to, um, to put them up there because, I mean, or what order you're going to put them in, or um, how do I say this? Sometimes you might have the question, you might be asking yourself, well, what if the verses that I put on here are not the verses that the presenter wants? And the facts of the matter are, if you have the title, like a subject, and you put together a subject on that, I'm sure whatever the presenter is, they'll be able to use that and then be able to give a presentation and share based on things, even if they've never seen the notes. If it's formatted like this with the Bible and Spirit of Prophecy quotes are in the speaker notes, it's able to kind of piece together what the idea is behind the subject. And since we're studying out of the same Bible, we're sharing the same message, a third angel's message, we'll be able to, by God's grace, be able to give a, a united message together. So you don't really have to worry about that. So I'll give you another example. So that that is what you saw from a article um, that was finished. Here's an example of one that's not finished. You might get something that looks like this. Maybe it's just one slide and then there's the title section. And so maybe what you've been given is a title, five ways to memorize the Bible. You have the freedom as a content editor to decide maybe you have five, five ways that you really enjoy about studying the Bible. And then you're able to just pop those on there and throw on some Bible verses. If you're graphically inclined, you could put the, you can, Go all out so then faith comes by hearing hearing the word of god or you could just put them like i like I'm, i showed you before just put the verse on there and let the graphic designer come behind you and add it there um it, it's up to you but um so here these are some verses where oop, where there's some verses here you can take this the best way to learn so luke 6 48 there is a um, law of imparting so you're able to just take this verse and look it up in a electronic Bible. I'm going to open up eSword and I'm going to go to Luke 6, 48. Here's the verse. Now, oh, it actually wasn't 648. It was 638. Whoops. But if you want, what I would have done is actually take that. You can right click it and you go to... Um, Oh, actually, you can't do that. Interesting. You might be able to right-click anywhere up here and just click add a comment. And it says, 
Luke 6.48 in the speaker notes. Do not say anything about the law of imparting. I am assuming you meant Luke 6.38. So I didn't mean Luke 6.38. Now I'm going to get back down here. I'm going to change that. Change that to a three, but what I'm going to do is, like I showed you before, I'm going to go to section header, and with this section header, I'm just going to paste the verse there. And with that verse, the, I will be able to change the background, or the graphic designer will be able to. So that's going to be really helpful. And so you could decide. Now here, it's tell a story. This is an illustration that's being used, and it's talking about a grocery store. So what you could do is you can find a photo of a lady who's shopping through the grocery store, a guy who's shopping through the grocery store, and as you put that illustration there, as you tell a story, it's going to really put go well together with it. Even though you don't really know what the story is, that just being able to find from the grocery store keyword, you can search and find something relevant. Um, if you're wondering what you can, uh, what other verses you might want to use, here's a Google Doc that's provided. So you can take this, you can copy that, and then you can open that in a new tab and you can just see, well, what are some other Bible verses or content? Maybe I don't want to come up with my own content on how to study the Bible. Maybe I want something like this. So I can see, wow, this is such a powerful promise that the Holy Spirit is going to bring all things to my remembrance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to go over um, for... Pray for a supernatural ability to memorize. I'm going to go like this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a section header. And I'm going to say, pray for a supernatural ability to memorize scripture. Or maybe tip number five. Like that. Oops. Scripture. And so that's a good title. Now I'm going to create another section header, and I'm going to actually put the Bible verse there. Control Shift V. And there, I could change the background if you're graphically inclined. I'm not, so I'm just going to leave it there. But over on this document, we saw that there is a Review and Herald quote. That's really powerful. So she actually quotes this verse, and then she starts commenting on it. So as far as the Spirit of Prophecy goes, Let's do our best to not have as much Spirit of Prophecy in the uh, slides itself, but let's keep it in the, the topic notes. This is probably going, this is going to be a little bit more tactful. That way the presenter is able to read the quote and choose to give the reference or not. But knowing that our field is the world, we want to reach everyone. And, and so... If we can lead with the Bible as far as the content that's being displayed on the screen and then have the commentary be the Spirit of Rhapsody quotes, then we know that our comments are going to be in harmony with the Word of God. So that will that will really help as a content creator to even communicate what you kind of had in mind for the presentation. That would probably help. That would help tremendously. So based on this here, this speaker notes, you should be able to create an entire slide presentation and you can edit the content. So that's what a content editor is. Now you can also take the liberty on YouTube. It is so tremendously helpful or just on any modern publishing to ask engaging questions and to really be intentional about what engaging questions you want. So here, is let us know in the comment section what are your favorite ways to memorize scripture that's an engaging question to help people to comment that's important because every time someone comments our stuff will grow will show up more in their news feed so the suggested section on youtube our videos will pop up more youtube wants to promote youtube facebook these social media platforms they want to promote content and videos that are creating engagement from the people. So every time someone comments, it, it boosts the 
um, visibility of the Word of God to more people. So as a content creator, you it would be tremendously helpful. You can even suggest a question to be used. Now, let's say we record this video, put it on YouTube. This question would also be the very first comment that the ministry asks in the comment section. So whatever question, engaging question you decide, we'll be able to comment that, pin it at the top, so everyone who ever views the video, that's a very first question that they see and they can respond to it. So that's what you want to keep in mind. That helped tremendously. There might be a call to action. There's, there's we're, we're told in the book of evangelism, we want to have an appeal at the end of every message because sometimes this is the only type of message that people are going to hear. So that appeal might be subscribed so that they can hear more messages. That appeal might be, what are you going to change to make time for your life? Or the appeal is pray for a supernatural ability to memorize scripture. It's like, do that right now. Or an appeal might be share this video with someone else who could use some encouragement or who has a desire to memorize scripture. Or the so the call to action could be different things based on the content or whatever. So you can give some suggestions for call to actions. That could really help. Uh, for the presenters and things like that. So you'll see that as a content editor, there'll be different types of messages you can you can give. But here's another example. Let's say you are a book go. Let's say you are reading um, material or that you are enjoying learning about enzymes. Here we go. So here's a book about, um, let me back it up. How do enzymes work in your body? This is a really simple and easy book that the table of contents is that's uh, kind of bright. Anyways, they have the table of contents and then they have some really beautiful images. Like those are supposed to be enzymes and they're illustrating how the enzyme takes the nutrients and then the enzyme breaks the nutrients apart so that we can use it. So now the nutrients are separated. It's really neat. And they show that there's different types of enzymes, lacto lactase for breaking down dairy, and they got cellulose for breaking down um, plant cellulose. They show the, um, the role of enzymes in the cycle of life. So it describes how a tree grows, it blooms, and then it, it bears fruit. And then what happens is, you have a photo of an apple, the fruit grows, um, and as the fruit ripens, enzymes develop in the fruit. So they show the little enzyme depiction in the half of an apple. And then when the fruit is ripe, it falls to the ground. As the fruit lies on the ground, the enzymes start to break apart the food in the apple. They also release the moisture in the apple. The seed uses the broken up food and moisture and starts to grow. So you see, that was a very beautiful, like the enzymes create new life. That was a concept. That was the entire chapter. So what you could do, science is not copyrighted. Her, the, this author, her exact words are copyrighted, but the science that she's sharing is not. So if you want to educate people about, um, about science, it has to be changed. Like there's a um, free... There's, there's um, free use laws that you're able to use some content and similarities. But for this, this is as simple as like, look, you can, you can Google um, public domain images of a little tree and then have in the comment section, a tree grows, right? And then you have the next slide or maybe the next animation, it blooms. So you look for a tree that has a lots of flowers. It doesn't have to be this photo, but then and bears fruit. And so you look for a tree that has a whole bunch of apples on it. You just look up apple tree. Then you just look up a close up of, a, of an apple, close up of like a half split apple, and then another one, and then a rotten apple. And so you're able to base, and then like a seed that's sprouting, like first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn type of stuff. So you can go through a publication, you can devour different health publications, and do not, I repeat, do not use the photos from their publications because images are copyrighted, um, but the science is not. The Bible verses is not copyrighted. So 
uh, which you want you don't want to like copy other publications but what you could do is take simple health articles health education and you can make slides you can make health nuggets and use your own images we can research them there's if, if you've gone through our graphic designing training then you have seen that there are lots of resources and search engines that we can use to find some really high quality images on a variety of different things that we're looking for. And here's a quick note for Google Slides. If you type in Apple space PNG, then it will automatically remove the background. So you're just slapping on an Apple that looks so crisp and clear and it looks really nice. So you don't have to actually edit out the background. Just type in um, apple tree dot png and it'll have no background it's transparent or you can type in rotten apple space transparent png and then you're able to just insert that to the google slides and it looks really nice so you don't have some photos that have like white backgrounds other photos that have like a tile background and other photos that are inside outside in nature or in an orchard and it looks kind of weird but the um the transparent photos are really easy to slide on there but Essentially, so I hope that you see what I'm saying. You can really take whatever subjects that you're studying and you're enjoying and, and you can be able to make some slides for this and you can send them. But if you work with us, then you'll be able to, we'll be able to communicate together what are priority topics. What are, we can find things that you, one, are super passionate about. Two, we might have documents that have done really good that people really demand like they like to know that subject you can take the documents and make slides out of them or we can suggest publications or you can have publications to make out of them or we can give a title like five ways to memorize scriptures or um, a subject of the work of enzymes and as you're studying about enzymes or maybe you're studying the itinerary of the breakfast by um, dr kellogg that book is amazing. We would love, love, love to have slides and do a presentation, use that as a textbook and have a short video to teach people for some online classes regarding digestion and the stages of digestion and how it works. Wikipedia has tremendous scientific um, photos that are all public domain. Every image on wikipedia.org is all public domain, so we can use it, modify it, change it, However, no copyrights whatsoever. So those are good resources to know. But the science is not copyrighted. So you can, we can give like a list of different topics. Like maybe it's just a topic on water. Maybe it's a topic on like the eight laws of health. And we can just put together a presentation on that. Maybe uh, you've been studying about, um, maybe you've been studying about the mineral of iron and you can, put together some studies that you or like uh, compile some clinical studies that different schools or in health institutions have done. And you can put those sources on there. You could put different uh, Bible and spirit of prophecy principles, some spiritual connections between health and spirituality and the gospel. And you could, you can have those on there, uh, different Bible verses or different suggested foods that are high in iron content. You can do anything that you'd want. What happens when your body's deficient on iron, anemia, how to overcome that, or how the blood works, or what the iron does inside the cell. There's different things that you're studying. Um, probably what would be priority are things that we would suggest, but if we don't have things to suggest, we can work together and communicate as content editors and presenters with the people who are presenting what content would be really well for us to work together on producing. And in a situation like that, we could really tell a, a, an amazing story together. So here's one last example too. So uh, as you can see, for each different type of content, we'll probably give some parameters or there'll be some communication regarding what is the vision or the idea behind the content before we start like going at it. But here's an example of the values. We want to share, we want to do some presentations on what are the values that the ministry has? There's 10 values. And if you go to our website on the About Us section, you'll find all 10 values there. Um, it's on the About Us, our values. And so as a ministry, we value the Bible. We value evangelism, fruit of the spirit, gospel of health, consecration, industry, disinterested benevolence, prudence, 
continual advancement, and integrity. So we want to be able to have eventually a um, five-minute segment on each of these topics. Just five minutes worth of content. That could be probably about one verse per minute um, and maybe five verses or five points for each one of these topics. So let's say the gospel of health, here's, here's a study. And then like over here as a content editor, you can either add these verses or as you can see, I, I added some. These are some thoughts as I was meditating. What are things that we want to add? James 1.27 says, Pure religion undefiled before God is this, visiting the, the widow in her affliction and the fatherless. And so medical missionary work is the gospel practice, the gospel practically carried out. And I was like, I know that's a spirit of prophecy quote. Where is that? Oh, it's right here. So keep the spirit of prophecy quotes in the, in the presenter section. And then we would plaster this Bible verse big onto the uh, title section. So that's really nice. And it has like five points. We've come to a point where every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. That's a spirit of prophecy quote in uh, six volume of testimonies. But maybe a proof text for that from the Bible is the great commission that's given to every disciple of Christ. That in Matthew 10, it said, heal the sick, preach the gospel, cleanse the le leopards. So we see by his example, here's a ministry of healing quote, Jesus spent more time healing the sick than to preaching. So these are just different things that it, as you create more content and you see these slides, you'll realize the format that we want them in, just like this how to study the Bible example that I was giving. We have, um, here we go. So there's seven reasons why you don't enjoy studying the Bible. These are the seven, and here's the content. So sanctify them by that truth, that word is truth, and here are the um the speaker notes or some concepts to add for that. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honest, this is the law of our viewing. This is how we identify what type of content we want to be beholding. So it's like whatsoever is good report. It's like is the news uh, positive, a good report? No. CNN stands for constantly negative news. So your eyes are an avenue to your mind and soul. Guard your thoughts by stopping to watch bad channels. So that's that's pretty good information. But this is basically the format of how we want like the content to be added. And so you have some titles, and you have the um, you have the verses, and you have the here's a messages of young people quote. So this is some really powerful content that we can do together. And here is also uh, for the values. We have these photos. Here's prudence. Um, and then there's disinterested benevolence. I'm going to look for gospel of health. It's consecration. There's a gospel of health. So I can take that control X for cut. And I can actually do control paste for the gospel of health. And then this is just a really good illustration of what this could look like. There we go. We have it. And then we have those sections, and we could just keep adding more to that. So I hope this makes sense. Um, in short, what what a content editor will be able to do is primarily be making Google Slides based on different studies. You could be given a title and communicate with a presenter on what kind of the idea or vision is, and you can have freedom to add whatever Bible verses you want. We want Bible verses on the slides, Spirit of Prophecy in the in the description. You might have presenter notes that you're able to, add, to start with or add or finish or whatever. You might be given a list of things like these values. Any of these values would be really good. Ten things. Um, we want five minutes worth of content on all ten slides. That might be about five points for each of the ten values. So that communicates that there might be like five slides. And um, sometimes you might be given a document that you can take a document on how to study or how to memorize the scriptures. And you can just take different Bible verses, spirit of prophecy quotes, and you can start from scratch or you can start from there. And you have the freedom to, to suggest, um, to participate in what is the engaging question that we want to ask the viewers and put in the pin at the top of the comment section. What is a really viral title that we could use? 
maybe something to that effect, what's clickable. Um, different illustrations, when you see illustrations, you want to find those photos and pop them up there so it's not just the presenter talking, but so that there's something to let the person see. Usually if the slides change every like three seconds, it's easier to pay attention. People have a short attention span. So as a content editor, your work is really important and is a great opportunity to take what you've been learning and share it with other people. And this is a fantastic way to co-labor together in the Lord's field that literally you may not be able to stand before thousands, but through your through the harmonious working of the people of God, we we your efforts can reach hundreds of thousands of people offline, online, locally, globally, and from all different classes of people. This work is powerful. And thank you for watching. I hope that this video shed more light on your walk with God and that I really look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much for considering the role of a content editor. I hope that this was um, clear on what this kind of looks like. Have a great day. God bless.